<laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Trending Essay, where we dish out the trends and tackle all the hot topics of the day. Alma over here has been taking a few uh, duck tutorials. And girl, listen, which accounts are you following on ID? Oh, I'm, I'm doing my best this Heritage Month, guys. I'm it's digging. fabulous. I love the style. I'm digging out all my Rakhari vibes and I'm bringing them to the table. I, I, think, I think you're superseding the Rakhari situation right now. I love it. It's no, I just, I just wish this was happening and your father was getting the cows for it. Because whenever a white woman wears this outfit, <laughs> A white man is getting cows. You mustn't, oh, wow. mustn't give him any ideas about cows now. Whoa, whoa, can you, whoa. Can you love Allah retrospectively? Because also, yes. maybe put your husband on yeah. like, you know, maybe your husband needs and to your send dad might cows. just want to demand them right Ooh, now. Oh, guys, you are causing ice molest. <laughs> Time out mm -hmm. with this conversation. I love what you're wearing as well, Rufule. Thank you, darling. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looking like you got your groove back. Mm, like lovely, that. lovely. Listen, oh, wow. if, it's on, oh, if it's on my oh, timeline, hey. And your timeline, <laughs> then it should be unpacked, don't you think? Mm, you know, it. right now, it's time for Top Trends. So, our not-so-beloved, speaking of people that wear things on their heads, ne? Minister of Police <laughs> is trending again. Mm. In an interview with Morning Live, Minister of Police Becky Kele was asked about the concerning human trafficking trend that's been, you know, bubbling on our timelines. We've all seen the video. Um, and he said, and these are his actual words, I'm not sure about the increase, or is it about the publicity? The South Africans are complaining that this seems to be on the increase. Uh, what is the police's take on human trafficking at the moment? Well, I, I'm not sure about the increase or is about publicity. Uh, the figures per se uh, under the lock, lockdown has gone... So he says it's gone down during lockdown. Obviously, South African tweeps reacted to the interview. Muloe Mul Tendo says, I've always known that we were in the dog. Direct Sanjay. translation. Yes. Direct translation. Okay, yeah. anyone walk. I just mm -hmm. didn't realize how bad it was until our Minister of Police said this morning that human trafficking is a public stunt. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now Lady Mashishi had a different view. Um, and this agrees with the officer, office of the minister. Uh, now, lady says he didn't say it's a publicity stunt. He said there isn't data to support the notion that human trafficking is on the rise and that kidnapping isn't always human trafficking. Now, lady says he's correct here. My point is, even one case of human trafficking, mm. one is to one too many. Yeah. I don't care about whether it's more or whether it's less. Well, I think more than anything, there just should be stats just to begin with, okay? That's your function. Mm -hmm. But secondly, citizens are genuinely concerned. Allay their fears, talk to us, and actually tell us what you're doing. Yes. Don't downplay the situation. It is more than worrying. Yeah. Anyway, let's keep it moving, taking a look at this. We are officially on level one of the national lockdown. And after six months of hard restrictions, life is starting to look somewhat normal. But the health ministry <laughs> has warned us that the fight against COVID, don't laugh, my play, the fight against COVID-19 is far, far, far from over. And uh, joining us via Skype to give us a COVID-19 update is Professor Shabir Mahdi, a friend of the show, leading professor of vaccinology at the University of Witwatersrand. Professor Mahdi, welcome to Trending Essay once again. Thank you so much for your time. Hi, good evening. Thank you for having me. Professor, just to get straight into it, where do we stand as a country? How are we doing? So I think South Africa is actually in a reasonably good space mm -hmm. right now. With regard to the current outbreak, we're pretty much on the wane, and we're sort of leveling at a very low rate of infection, mm -hmm. which is great. Uh, but in addition to that, the only thing that possibly explains what is being experienced in South Africa is the likelihood that a reasonable percentage of the population, probably up to about one third, have been infected with the virus. Mm. Fortunately for us, that hasn't translated into massive number of cases of hospitalization mm. and people dying of COVID-19. Now, the reasons for that is unknown, but the reason why it's important that such a high percentage of people have likely been infected which has sort of allowed for some evolution of what we call herd immunity, yeah. where there's an interruption in terms of the chain of transmission of the virus, is that if there is a resurgence, in all likelihood, the resurgence will be less severe than what we experienced this time around. 
Interesting. Which is actually good news. Yeah. Unlike what is happening currently in many European countries, where a very small percentage of the population were infected with the first wave, and they're experiencing significant number of cases with the resurgence. Okay. So a few weeks uh, back when we spoke to you, the vaccine trials, uh, we've been kind of keeping an eye on the process there. What is the update? What are the timelines looking like now? Right, so we, the enrollment into the studies are progressing well. Uh, but because of the waning of the epidemic in South Africa, uh, paradoxically, paradoxically, it will result in us actually needing to delay before we will be able to know whether the vaccine protects against COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Because the manner in which the vaccine studies are designed is that there needs to be a certain number of individuals that develop COVID-19 before you can do an analysis as to whether the vaccine protects against COVID-19. So with so few people becoming infected nowadays in South Africa, which is great news mm -hmm. for South Africa, but a vaccine study delays our timelines in terms of when we'll be able to address a question as to whether the vaccine works or not. Mm. All right. Wow. That's Prof Madi, thank you so much for that valuable update. And of course, all the best in the very important work that you are doing for all of us. We are humbly requesting that you come back sometime <laughs> in the future. <laughs> if you'll humor us that way, uh, we'll look forward to it. But thank you so much, Professor Shabir Madi. See you guys after the break. We have fashion designer Laduma Ngokola on the fourth chair mm. talking about all things Makosa and those high-end runways. Cannot wait. You should not miss it. Welcome back. You're still watching Trending Essay on SABC3. Now, since launching his brand 10 years ago, our guest tonight has cemented his position as a pioneer and innovator in the fashion world. His brand ethos is rooted in his rich Klausa culture, his identity and aesthetics. Now, over the years, the Maklasa Africa brand has become synonymous with African luxury and his bespoke geometric knitwear patterns have awed local and international fashion enthusiasts. I think they've just gripped us and taken, mm. us, taken us by storm, actually. Now, fresh off his successful virtual new New York Fashion Week showing, ladies and gentlemen, we need to put our hands together for the incomparable <laughs> Laduma Ngokola. Thank you so Appreciate much, Ngokola. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for. Oh my goodness! Show. What an honor! What an absolute honor! 
Your, you named your uh, uh, Spring Summer 21 collection, Ingo Mangaliso Imisebenzi Gatiko. Absolutely. That is a song composed by, entitled by your late uh, grandfather, Omaik Ngakolo, and it's called God. Uh, God's Work is Miraculous, right? For those uh, that don't mm. speak, it's Kasa at home. Talk to me about the creative influence that your grandfather has had over you um, throughout your work and your life. Um, my grandfather has had pretty much, I'd say, a, a huge dominance in my creative choices. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, he passed away when I was like maybe 12 years or nine years yeah. old. I don't remember. But I remember him as a charismatic person that was very open-minded. Mm. But I was shocked when I enrolled to a high school that is multiracial school. Yeah. And he was part of the compulsory composers in the music this session so to study about. Yeah. Even my high school teacher didn't even believe me when I said that this is my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally brought some of his hymn songs. You brought the receipts. Yeah, the and receipts. <laughs> and showed him. Mm. Um, but uh, he was a multi-talent. He was an actor. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I saw clips of him. He was a TV presenter mm -hmm. on SABC2, the mm -hmm. choral music show. He was a school principal. He was a sculptor. He was... Um, a lot. Basically, your grandfather didn't let other kids breathe. Like, he wasn't <laughs> yeah. giving him space to I, I, flourish. I, I think with know? the times that he was living in, you know, he had yeah. the freedom to do yeah. all of that. Of course, you've showcased at uh, the iconic New York Fashion Week before, right? What is different about doing the showing this time around? And I want to talk to you, I want you to talk to us a little bit about the collection as well. I mean, it must have been so scary but anxiety written to do it during these very strange conditions this is pretty much the most difficult show i've ever had to do uh, number one it had to be international standard sure. as always and number two we had to do everything in-house mm -hmm. and using the resources that we had available uh, so basically every all the creative aspects of it we had decided before sure. beforehand but we came to a part where we had to actually bring it to life, mm. which was the mm. most difficult part, you know, because we had limited workers um, that were available yeah. because of restrictions. We had supplies coming in slow, so we had to delay and refer. We had to get suppliers, get quotations to make yeah. sure that they would give us the best quality. Absolutely. Fortunately, by God's will, we managed to loop everything together yeah. and delivered the video to New York Fashion Week um, 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 data um, website mm -hmm. the day before the show. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was even late, you know, but <laughs> oh for some reason, when things feel a bit shaky, mm -hmm. we get the best results, you Beautiful. know, like, and that's one of the actions that God is powerful at. Absolutely. Yeah. I love how global your brand is. Mm -hmm. But it's so, so, so intrinsically local at the same time. What is it that makes your brand work on a global platform? What is it that people from elsewhere, because we know why, why we love it. What, what is it that other people from other countries find in your work that, that they tell you this is why we love it? Well, um, from the feedback that I got in from the countries that I've been to, uh, most of them feel like the minute they look at it, it has a sophisticated African appeal. Um, that is not mistakable with any other continent. And also the color combination, you know, pattern design is a difficult skill to perfect. Um, I studied textile design from high school, um, grade eight. So by now, you know, I able to combine and balance colors. Mm. So it is a form of emotional reading that you receive with your eyes that makes a certain perception. So with most of the customers, they just, pretty much say it's beautiful. Um, and beauty can be defined in a lot of ways. Yeah. And um, quality as well is one of our most important principles because in the day, the product can be beautiful, but if it doesn't meet the standards, people won't find it worthy to invest mm, in it. I love, that. Mm, I love that. Okay. So you once said this in an interview, and I have to read it. <laughs> you said, <laughs> I make it explicit to everyone that I meet that South Africa is my priority market. 
right? Because my pieces were designed for a psychological struggle, the psychological struggle of identity, because there was no proudly black luxury brand out there, mm. one that's serving its own. I wanted to confront those issues. So how do we shift our understanding of Af uh, African luxury and how are we achieving this with the brand Makos? Um, to reiterate what you just mentioned, mm. uh, a lot of people make that mistake thinking that we prioritize the overseas market more than the local. Mm -hmm. Because for us, we feel like we are doing more than dressing people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We basically aim to dress people's hearts mm -hmm. and not just their bodies. It's beautiful. So, um, Please dress my heart. <laughs> Please dress my heart. Dress my heart. Um, mm. So we try by all means for people to understand the context behind our clothes before we actually sell the product to mm -hmm. them. Mm. So um, the work that we do psychologically mm. is all the things that we try to express without saying anything. Mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, we are in the design space. Okay. We are not in the political space or in the religion space. Mm. So um, yeah, um, that's precisely what I try to express everywhere I go, that uh, we are trying to make our people unlearn that fact that culture is something that is demonic or mm. has mm. negative mm. connotations. Mm. Um, it is the only thing that's left for us, you know, to, 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 to utilize and create a sense of homogeneity between our cultures so that we know that culture wasn't there to separate us. It was mm. there to unite us as, as, as the people. Mm. I, I need to be your muse. I need to be your muse. <laughs> I need to be your muse. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you so much uh, for sharing some of your journey. Mm -hmm. Is there one word that you would have given 10 years ago, Laduma? Just a, just a bit of advice. Is there one quick thing, just one word? It's not one word, it's two words. It's sure. Find your purpose. Find beautiful. your purpose. That's there you have it. Thank out. you so much, <laughs> Laduma Capolo. If you thought we couldn't top it, after this interview and after the previous one my Blair had with Tamia, then you need to wait for what's next. We have international R&B and soul superstar Anthony Hamilton on Training SA next. Welcome back to Training SA on SABC3. We're joined now by a man with a soulful voice. Mm.
Welcome back to Training SA on SABC3. We're joined now by a man with a soulful voice. Mm, mm, oh, mm. are you ready, ladies? Ne? Not quite, actually. Our brother <laughs> from another country. Anthony had ma has made it very clear where we stand. Mm -hmm. He loves us, guys. He really does. And if you don't believe me, let me tell you. He has been here more than six times. This yeah? is basically his no, home. No, this is basically his home. Yeah. Um, he has collaborated with South African musicians, uh, including Amanda Black and Casper Nuves on their recent project. Anthony Hamilton is basically a South African now. <laughs> and we have him on the line. Mr. Anthony Cornelius Hamilton, how are you doing? I'm great, brother. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> and, and how's Princeton, Nolan, and, uh, and all of them? How are they keeping up? They're, they're good. You know, they're, they're at the tutoring thing now to make sure they, you know, they try to pull the wool on daddy with the, with the schoolwork. <laughs> but they're doing great. They're doing great. So yeah. um, we talk about your recent col uh, collaborations with South African musicians. Um, in the um, Amanda Black collaboration, you actually sang in Skosa. How did you, because yeah, that is, yes, that is a language that's foreign to you. How did you actually emote, you know, singing in a language that... It's foreign to you. I think the food did it. <laughs> <laughs> what? You, you, know, uh, you know, being being there so many times, I've been there at least about eight times, and uh, just you start to feel it and it starts to make sense mm. to you. And uh, and Mandisa has been a very good teacher and, and all the people I've encountered. And so when it was time to do it, I, I I remember hearing it and what it feels like. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it was, it's just in there. Maybe I'm from South Africa. I got to do you my... You are. My, you are. You definitely I are. have to do my ancestry. Well, <laughs> I, have to, I have to admit here, um, as a white South yeah. African, I've had to practice the clicks. You know, like when I drive alone in my car, I make sure that I say it's, them correctly. How long did it take you to get that down? It's, it's the big... It's the, it's the lips. It's got a, the bigger lips. <laughs> got more click. It's all Elma. the lips. Get some it. Botox in there. <laughs> and a big yeah. shout out to Mandisa for being the excellent tutor. <laughs> Wherever you are, Mandisa, yeah. you're a good one. Your collaboration with Casper and your vest, uh, Egyptian cotton, mm -hmm. and Casper is a uh, father now. Mm -hmm. uh, the baby must be about a week, mm -hmm. just over a week old. Yeah. So he, yeah, that's yeah. a lovely, lovely um, uh, development for him. Co Egyptian cotton is basically all about that family flex, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I read in OK Africa that no managers, managers were involved in this transaction. Somebody sent uh, a WhatsApp, Casper sent you a WhatsApp, and uh, that yeah. evening you sent back vocals on some, done, here you go. Mm -hmm. What was it about yeah. that song I mean, that made you buy in so quickly? Just meeting him and seeing that he was such a stand-up guy and mm -hmm. such a great musician, and uh, it was just a brotherhood that connected. And I felt like this was somebody I'd like to collaborate with. Mm -hmm. You know, no nonsense, great guy, family man, and just putting out good music. And he's about the, the people. So I love that. when I heard it, his music prior to that, I was already in. And uh, it was a no-brainer for me. Yeah. So you talk about the fact that you've been here and all the people you love who are from here now. Um, you were scheduled to have visited us, us again to get a, another fix of uh, South Africa in Women's Month. Unfortunately, that fell through. What is it you miss? I mean, you've mentioned the food, and I feel like that's one of the obvious ones. But what is it you miss about missing out on a trip here? Mm. You know, just able to connect to, 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 to my people and... and uh, See so many amazing brown and black people and lighter as well. <laughs> people from South Africa. It's a different, it's a different temperament, it's a different vibe. It's it's more relaxed and it's it feels more welcoming than coming to the States. I feel like people are, are genuinely open mm. to receiving you and to giving you love and they really appreciate what it is I bring. It's and so not only am I there for music, but I'm there to 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 take in the, the culture, the the people, the food, and um, mm -hmm. to take in the culture, the food, and to, to be a part of something that, that I feel like I've been connected to before, long before I got to South Africa. Yeah. So, Anthony, as a fellow South African, because you, you basically, you're one of us now. You no, know, we just need to give you an ID number and then give you a house and then you can just come through. Um, you are very I'm concerned ready. about gender-based violence, which is a pandemic that we're facing here. It's a second pandemic after Corona. 
um, and you wanted to actually speak on it. So I'm going to give you the floor, my brother. You, you know, being um, subjected to seeing domestic violence as a child, uh, my mother, my sister, and, and young girls and women in my neighborhood, uh, I have no patience. I have no patience. I, don't, I have no understanding. I mm -hmm. have zero tolerance for it. Um, I think men are supposed to protect women. Um, we're supposed to protect them, guide them, and lead them and nurture them. Uh, women are supposed to have our children and, and, and be a part of our lives as flowers. And uh, they should feel safe. Mm -hmm. It's up to us, up, up to men, um, men of color, um, black, brown, white, no matter what, men should be a protector, mm. not domestic violence and, and, not, and not anger, uh, taking out anger on, on women. If your life is not where you need it to be, it's not her fault. I'm pretty sure if you allow this woman to nurture you and to build you up, she would. But you have to give her the opportunity and to uh, not be subjected to, to violence. I just, I can't. I, I think it's an outrage. And I think they should do a lot of time for it. Right. with any other crime. And I think it's up to uh, the people who are in power to, to make sure that the laws are put in place and to take this serious. Amen. I think uh, a slap on the wrist is not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just, yeah. that's just my stand on it. And um, it will never change. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you have a playlist so. on Soul September where you share your yeah. favorite list of R&B mm -hmm. and soul jams with <laughs> your fans. And Charlene made it onto that list, obviously. Um, I've seen oh, you've been yeah. missing Charlene on your socials for a <laughs> very long time. Um, yeah, what's happening yeah. with Charlene People there? Like, uh, any updates? You know about Charlene? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I, there's been sightings of her. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Ooh, you know, she, she do. she's around somewhere. Maybe she's getting her hair and nails done right now. I don't know. <laughs> when, uh, I, I wish her well, and, and thank you for <laughs> such a beautiful part of my life. Um, All right. And, you know, and I got to sing this the rest of my life, so. Might as well have fun with it, right? <laughs> so little birdie tells us you're cooking up something big in, this, in the studio. What are yeah. you working on? And any collaborations with South African artists that you have uh, tucked up your sleeve? You know what? I, I, I have to do, I have to get in with Zonke. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been talking... I think I've talked to her the longest of any uh, South African artist or African artist, period, international artist. And we have not, we have not, we haven't made good on our word. So I think it's time for us to make good on our word. And okay. uh, I'm going to reach out to her and see where she is. Lyra is another great it. one. Uh, Vusi Nova has hit, uh, yeah. contacted me. So I, I like what he does as well. Okay, um, I'd like to I hear that. I like to hear oh, that. Oh, he's a singing. He can sing. Mm. He, can, he can sing. He's a singer. No, it's different. So, uh, yeah, the new album will be out the top of the year, mm -hmm. um, like in February. I'm um, looking to to release the new album. Um, I'm talking to, um, you know, I have a few songs. I've been talking to John Legend. I have one with Rick Ross. Okay. Um, Keisha Cole. I've been thinking of, of her uh, because we're, we're, we're kind of close. Yeah. But I want this album to be special. I want it to be an album that touches the world. And uh, the only way to do that is to add the world to it. And mm. um, I'm excited about it. We're excited about I got it. Some, yes. I, got some, I got some heat. Yes. I'm coming with the heat. Yes, you are. <laughs> and, and I love that he shared with us before we went on air that his other name is Mzwandile. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, Mzwandile. Anthony yeah, Cornelius excited. Mzwandile Hamilton, <laughs> thank you for joining us on Training SA. <laughs> Yes, oh God, I love it, and it is in my heart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Anthony, and thank you at home. Let's do all of this over again tomorrow. We have a special <laughs> episode now that we're properly warmed up uh, with two Are you coming with the Rahadi outfit tomorrow? I'm bringing even more Rahadi. <laughs> we're just going to keep serving yeah. it every single day. I love it. Muzi and Trezor yes. mm -hmm. will be in the building, so you don't want to miss it. Cheers. Exactly.